We're continuing with problem solving, but we're adding an extra piece of information that you need to know. Because Earth is so large, we feel a gravitational pull, and because of that pull, things accelerate, i.e. they fall if we drop them. And there is a value when you're near Earth's surface or ocean level. So we call that acceleration, acceleration due to gravity, and you'll often see it represented with the letter G, and it represents the rate at which the speed of a falling object changes. And near ocean level, that the magnitude of that g is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, in actual reality, that 9.81 is an estimate. There are more decimal places to it. The direction for this is always towards Earth's core, right? So gravity object acceleration is always towards Earth. Okay, we might change its sign, positive or negative, depending on how you define positive for an individual question. For instance, think about this blue part down here. So consider a question where an object moves forward. So let's say the object moves this way, and we define that to be positive. But it's slowing down, which means that its velocity is changing in this direction, so A is in that direction, which means A is negative. Okay, so this could happen too with our gravity, right? If an object, let's say an object is falling, but you defined up to be positive, well then G will actually be negative 9.81 meters per second squared, right? So it all depends on your positive convention, i.e. which direction you choose to be positive. Here's a little bit more terminology for you. You might hear someone say that something's in free fall, and what that means is that there's no air resistance on the object. So the acceleration is actually 9.81 meters per second squared, and really to its full decimal place. But Technically, this will never happen. We can't make a perfectly aerodynamic object, so this will only ever happen in what's called a vacuum. A vacuum means it is space with no matter in it, so no air even. Therefore, no air resistance. You also might hear the term terminal velocity. This will come up a bit in this unit. It'll come up a bit in the next unit as well. And that's when something is falling and air resistance is so great because it's going so quickly for that particular object that the falling object is no longer accelerating. It's going at a constant speed. Basically, the air resistance is balancing the force of gravity. And you'll see this when we do our diagrams in the forces unit. So our gravity is balancing out the resistance force. So no longer have acceleration, it's a constant velocity. And for each object, terminal velocity is different. And also depending on how high above Earth's surface it is. We'll do a couple of quick examples. So this first one here, Paige drops a bouncy ball. And here, keyword already, drops a bouncy ball from a height of 1.2 meters. What is the velocity of the ball just before it hits the ground? So we're looking for a velocity. So we can fill in our given information here. So the initial velocity, because it is dropped, is zero meters per second. You see you've drawn a diagram over here as well, right? So here's the ball, and I've defined downwards as positive. So its direction of motion is positive. It goes down 1.2 meters. And V2 is what I'm looking for. T, I don't know right now, and acceleration is acceleration due to gravity, and we said downwards is positive, so our 9.81 is positive, and the distance also is positive, because it's down, is 1.2 meters, so it looks like T is the one I don't need, so I want the equation that has no t in it, so that is v2 squared equals v1 squared plus 2ad. And 
since I know v1 is 0, I'm going to take a little shortcut here. I'm just going to remove this right now. Right, It goes to 0, so we don't really need to have it there. And we're solving for v2, so I don't have to do too much rearranging. In fact, all I have to do is take the square root. And that's going to be the square root. And we know it's the positive one because it's heading downwards in the scenario, so we have to end up with a positive answer. So I'm going to put the plus here just so we make sure you understand we are definitely only taking the positive root of 2AD. And we can sub in our numbers here. Always put in our units so we can double check our work, make sure it makes sense. There's 1.2 meters. <clears throat> and if we multiply all of this, we get 2 times 9.81 times 1.2. I have the square root. Oops, sorry about that. I have the square root of 23.544. I want to round too early. And this unit in here is meters squared per second squared now. And then we take the square root. And I'm getting my positive answer of 4.9. Rounded it to two significant figures. And since we have meters squared and we're square rooting it, and per second squared and we're square rooting it, we get meters per second, which is exactly what I want. So there's a good check there, and we got our positive answer. So, therefore, the velocity of the ball as it hits, or just before it hits, Right, because the ground obviously would stop it but as the ball hits. The ground is 4.9 meters per second. And one more example. Luke throws a baseball upward at 2 meters per second from a height of 1.4 meters. How long does the ball stay in the air? So again, I've drawn us a diagram. Man, I keep moving the screen on you guys. Okay, I've got the ball here, and its initial trajectory is upwards, right? It throws it upwards at 2 meters per second. And you can see here I've defined upwards to be positive as well. And I've just kind of drawn the trajectory the ball is going to take. It's going to go up and then come back down. So let's pull out our given and required here. So he throws it upwards at 2 meters per second. So I'm putting in here V1 is positive 2 meters per second. And we have a height of 1.4 meters. And that's where his initial um, throw is from, right? So this distance here is 1.4 meters and in the end the ball ends up down here this is our finishing position okay so we started up here and then we ended up down here which means that our displacement is downwards which is negative because upwards is positive so our displacement here is negative 1.4 meters and um, we need to know how long it stays in the air so this is our unknown and we're dealing with gravity, so we're using an acceleration. And since up is positive, my acceleration this time has to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so now I can pick an equation. So I need to do the equation that does not have V2 in it. So I'm going to use displacement equals V1t plus one-half a t squared and you can see that isolating t is not the easiest thing to do because it's a quadratic here so I'm gonna have to use the quadratic equation 
So I'm just going to write this in standard form so it's something we recognize really easily. So a over 2 t squared plus v1 t minus displacement. Let's put in our numbers. So we have here 0 equals a over 2. So that's negative 9.81 divided by 2. So this is negative 4.905 meters per second squared times t squared plus positive 2 meters per second times time and then minus negative 4, so I end up with plus 1.4 meters. And I'm solving for t. And you can see that we can get the units to all be meters and adding up together, right? Because if we plugged in time here, then we'd be multiplying by, a, by seconds. So the units would then be, sec be meters because the seconds would divide out. And same thing here, we'd have seconds squared on the top. So the seconds again would divide out. So we're just adding a bunch of meters together, which is great, because we're allowed to do that. Okay, so let's just write the square root part here. I'm just going to skip up to here. So t equals, that's negative b, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times negative 4.5. 9, mostly for the sake of my space here, times 1.4 all over 2a, which is our uh, negative 9.81, because it's right, 2 times a, we go back to the value we had before we divided a by 2. And I end up with, for my square root, I have 2 squared. And then there's the 4 times 4.905 times 1.4. So we're adding that to our 2 squared. So I've got negative 2 plus or minus the square root of... 31.468 over negative 9.81 and I take that square root and it's 5.6 uh, so we're going to take that to be 6 just to be consistent with our 2 will be consistent with our significant figures so it's negative 2 plus or minus 6 divided by 9.81 sorry that's negative 9.81 and we need to end up with a positive, right? T is always positive. So if we do 2 plus 6, that's positive 4 divided by negative numbers, negative. So we only need to take the negative one, because that's the only one that's going to end up being positive. So we've got negative 8 divided by negative 9.81. And I will round that to 0 0.8 seconds. So therefore... The ball is in the air for 0 0.8 seconds.